The PL Show is brought to you by Kel Chaco, Kel 360, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. The problems of this world is the reason why many people make a difference on it. And that's why here on the PL Show, we bring you the stories of these amazing women doing wonderful things here in Ghana and around the world. Today on the Discovery Edition of the PL Show, we'll talk to one inspiring woman who has moved from behind the camera to in front of the camera today. She'll tell us why she calls herself a professional, a determined, a young and ambitious one at that. My name is Kemini Amano, and you're welcome to the PL Show. Remember, the PL Show is brought to you by the Kel Toothpaste brands, Kel 360, Kel Kits, and Kel Charcoal. Now, my costume, which you see now, is provided by Kafui Clothing, and my makeup is by the African American Beauty Academy and Spa. Right now, let's meet the creative lead for Colors Event here in Ghana. Come on. Up. I didn't hear the drum roll, so let me do it for you myself. <laughs> You're welcome. You look Thank as you. colorful as the, as the name of your company. Thank you. Thank How you. are you? I'm good. Take a seat. And you look beautiful as Thank well. Thank you so much. And your much. makeup was by the same, uh, you know, people who did mine. Yes. Um, African American Beauty yes. Academy and Spa. It's good to see you. Thank I you. wanted us to do some red carpet shenanigans, but we already <laughs> sat. But it's okay if you want to take us through what you're wearing, because I, I totally love the ensemble. Okay. Um. So my shoes are Aldo. Mm -hmm. I sell Aldo shoes. It's a side business of mine. Um. And my blazer, this was picked out by my little sister. Mm. She's a fashionista herself. I see. So, so yeah. the creative thing runs through the family. Yeah, it does. It does, right? It does. Now, let's talk about this family. Mm -hmm. um, what can you share about your family? How many are you? I'm from a family of 10, mm -hmm. five boys, five girls. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, my little sister and I, we are the creative people in the house. Okay. Um, some of my brothers are into. Um, one is a teacher. Okay, okay there's a, a DJ actually. Ooh. He's the last boy. <laughs> so, sounds interesting. Yes. But yes. a family of, of 10, that yes. means that there is always, you know, when there's a family party, it's, it's large. It is. It's large. Because we have a DJ in there. In, so. in there, so <laughs> always, always on the party end. Yep, yep. But we're happy to have you here and we'll Thank learn a bit so more much. about you when we come back. You're watching the PL show. Our guest today is Linda Farko Nutako. She is the creative lead for Colors Events. And as the name says, says it's an events company but why she's here we'll find out when we come back so stay with us anti-cavity gum protection brighter teeth and fresh breath i'm going to me see way we patch your banter man matthias here so so it's her smile the fresh breath me gd said we used to care three city toothpaste Kel 360 toothpaste. That's Kia. Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Kel 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. Hey, you will see so feeling. Kel 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Kel 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity. Gum protection. Brighter teeth and fresh breath. Kill. Happy smile. This apple is FDA approved. Mommy. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy, Happy smile. smile.
This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the Kale Toothpaste PL Show. I am Kemini Amano. Today, our guest for the Discovery Edition is Creative Lead for Colors Event, Linda Fako Nutako. I really love your name. Thank but who you. is Linda? Well, um, Linda is a detail oriented person, mm -hmm. um, hardworking, um, driven. I'm very passionate about what I do. And um, I believe that you need to be fair to everyone, so I'm very open and honest. Um, I, I'll describe myself as someone who loves cooking. I actually enjoy cooking. Right. Um, I clean as a, how should I say? To de-stress? Yeah, therapy. Okay. <laughs> I would say that cooking was therapeutic for me. Oh. But what about cleaning is therapeutic for you? I like things in a particular order, mm. that's me. So usually when I'm not myself, you see that things are not exactly the way they're supposed to be. Right. My workers will say that I check every single thing on the table, every line, like when you put, you set a table, I come and check, I'll cross check and check, I like see. that's me. <laughs> so let's talk about this work. What is Colors Event about? Colors Event is an event planning, coordination, and an event design company. Um, we focus mainly um, corporate events. We do weddings, lifestyle experiences, so any form of parties. We don't do funerals though, but we coordinate sometimes, mm. especially for our special clients. Like specific, high profile funerals? Um, yeah, we have done a couple, okay. but we usually do it for clients who have already, you know, um, interacted with us. We've actually worked together mm. and they like our services, so we work for just our clients, but not new clients. Okay, I see. Yes, old clients. So why colors? The name. Mm -hmm. So I believe that every space needs color to make a pop. I have a way of putting things together to bring beauty to any ordinary space. That's why that name came about mm. yeah so tell us about your educational background i know you did bfa for your first degree i did uh -huh. i did i attended the school of performing at, at university of ghana mm -hmm. um, i majored in directing um, right after school i i was a teaching assistant in school so i was able to assist a lot of students um, during that time i realized that at my early time in school that i preferred being behind the scene than on the scene. So okay. like being the main, the center of attention. So I was acting in the beginning, but I realized that I preferred directing. So okay. you find me always standing by the directors trying to, you know, learn a few tips here and there. So did you direct any for yourself? I did. Okay, I did. what did you do? So I, I directed um, Dream Girls. It, it was a stage adaptation. Mm -hmm. I adapted this um, from Tom Ayan. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was. It was a musical, so it it was pretty exciting. Wait, was was and that intense. your first major um, gig as a director by yourself, solo gig? Well, so what we do usually with school was um, we'll do little small ones, like two scenes, two act kind of mm -hmm. um, plays. But that was my biggest. Right. Yes, it was my so biggest. So how did the adaptation go? Because um, this was you know something something that people knew about already right that you were redoing yes how did that go challenging but i love challenges so it was intense because it was all film and you know moving film to stage isn't easy so i have a mentor he's called derek sorono he okay. helped me in terms of the scripting so we're able to do that and uh, i directed it managing the space small space and trying to bring everything else alive and you know because movie gives you the opportunity for you to be able to do anything mm -hmm. stage is limited so you have to be creative enough to be able to do that your costume makeup everything but it, it was great i enjoyed I it do you go back and look at it you know because i'm sure it was recorded so. yes it was and i actually still want to do it like as a major mm -hmm. thing but you know you have to go through the proper channels yeah. going uh, getting the rights for it and all that so i'm but, still but looking when, into when it when you left school mm -hmm. you didn't go straight into theater well, you did other things i did okay. so my my lecturer at that time um the late godwin Cote. He had his own um, production house. Okay. 
So right after school, he he was still doing directing in terms in terms of stage and TV. Mm -hmm. So I got to work with him. I interned with him for a while. We were able to do like corporate events as well. Mm -hmm. We were able to do um, plays. We did um, Yasantua um, Ituatubare. At what point did you transition from what you were doing as a film and theater person into colors events? Well, it's interesting. When I was on campus, I was doing events. So <laughs> a couple of my fr uh, friends, we came together. We formed this company called Image One Concept. Oh. So we would handle um, whole week stuff, like little, little things. We'd do um, fashion shows. That's how we started. But when we finished school, everyone went their way. Mm -hmm. But I still loved it. I mean, it's my passion. So... I but I'm just wondering what made you guys come together. Was it the hassle of it or you had seen within you? We all had that different, different scale sets. Okay. So someone picked production, mm. someone picked getting sponsorship, someone picked event planning itself. So we were just different people who fit, like who, who was just like a perfect fit. And you were ready to set up a company. Yeah, we did. Know, as far back as then. Yes. Okay, so then Colors event started when, um, you know, the group of friends had parted ways. Not exactly. Okay. So I personalized mine because um, right after school, they did their own things. Okay. They, yeah, some pursued dance, some pursued um, directing. Mm -hmm. Others are still directing, actually. Some feathered the education mm -hmm. to go to school. I was able to go to um, farmhouse productions okay. right after school. Mm -hmm. So I was there, I was a, a producer at farmhouse, but I was handling events as well for um, like corporate events. Okay. So MTN specifically. So I was working mainly with MTN. Mm -hmm. So I kind of harnessed my skill, perfected my craft at that stage. Okay. Now. I was doing events for free for friends. So like their weddings. <laughs> their weddings. Naming ceremonies. Always for free. Like mm -hmm. and because I loved it, I didn't really think about making money from it. I was like, oh, it's something I love doing. I didn't think it was something I could actually earn something from. So one day a friend of mine told me, Why don't you just go into it full time? Because you're good at it. You can sleep, wake up and then mm. plan people's stuff. So how about you actually make money from it? That's when Colors came. And which year was this? Um, this was 2017. 2017. And since then, you've had, um, I, well, I, I, I cannot count, yeah. a lot of events. I have. What are some of your biggest? 2017, when I started, before I went into full time, I trained with White Chalk, the planner. I always give him that credit because he's a friend of mine, yes, but then he's very good at what he does. Okay. I went into design, event design then, because I, I, was, I was then doing event planning and event coordination, which I was very good at. So I trained with him for a while. Right after I did, I got my first job my very first job and before i got that job i actually helped a friend create a concept for their wedding mm. and someone who came there saw it and liked it i didn't do the setup i just put all the, the things concept. together mm -hmm. and that's how i got my first job right i was very excited mm -hmm. and right afterwards i think my biggest job so far has been uh, i think it was a muslim wedding I did a Muslim wedding, yeah. What kinds of events would you find colors doing? We do corporate events, weddings, we do parties as well. But I think my strongest niche is corporate and weddings. Mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that come with starting your own business hmm. in events? Okay, so you know the event industry, um, we have seasons. Okay and it takes a lot so if you're doing event planning and coordination you don't need to put a lot of capital in there you just need to brand yourself properly and then you'll be able to make the market like okay. you know get someone if if you if you get lucky you get to work for someone for the very first time you build from there but if you're going into event planning coordination and design design takes a lot in terms of financial strength you need to put in a lot of money now um i started 
I, I started from my savings. I had saved towards this. When I decided I want to do it, I wanted to do it, okay. I I decided to put some money down. I got lucky my or blessed I should say. Mm -hmm. Yes. My brothers invested in my business. Oh wonderful. So yes, it takes So are they like part owners of your business? No. Okay. They said it's something they just wanted to do to help me start Amazing. off. Yes. Maybe. So basically, I was able to do that. So um, it, it, it takes a lot when it comes to the event design aspect, but for coordination and then planning, it's more about creativity and being able to stand pressure. I see. Yeah. How do you handle that pressure when it comes? Well, I would say, like with anyone and everyone who knows me, I'm a very composed person. I like to process things before I talk. Okay. I don't just jump. So that's what helps me within my workspace because mm -hmm. you meet a lot of people, different people, different clients. Mm -hmm. They are from different places. The, the understanding is totally different. Even vendors that we work with. Mm -hmm. My composure has helped me because you can actually flare up. Yeah. You, have a, you have someone, a, a fellow vendor who you trust disappoint you but you have to be composed or even when somebody's not seeing the vision oh yes exactly mm -hmm. and you have to keep going over and over again and still maintain it don't be angry you, you can't be angry mm -hmm. but what what helps me is planning when you plan ahead it helps okay. it makes it makes it easier it makes it yeah easy. but I also see from your um, career journey mm -hmm. uh, that you have um, interned with a lot of people. Yes. Obviously, that has been helpful to you. But tell us, you know, how important that period was in building the woman you have become. Yeah, I have had a lot of mentors, and I, f I think that um, I'm here because of them. They basically pushed me into being the woman I am today. They, they are the kind that they don't take excuses. Mm. So you'd have to deliver don't complain mm. just get it done and in doing that it, it built me up in a, a certain way i became very resilient mm -hmm. i mean i'll not let anything throw me down right. and i am i i am very focused when i want to do something and very passionate about mm -hmm. it i was able to build all those little things through my mentors and i'll give my first credit to my late um, professor yeah. I see. So um, are you mentoring some people now? Um, yes, I am. Okay. Talk to us about that. I am. Okay. So I, I currently work with a team. Okay. Um, I have two on my team. One actually has her own business. And then there's another who I believe has a lot of potential. Mm. So she's one of the people I'm you know, concentrating on. Because the thing is, to be in the event space, you need a particular attitude you you can't it, it can't be just anybody mm. that's the thing because the gift, of, the gift is not enough it's not okay. it's not you need stamina you need you need composure there are so many details and a client can get you angry or someone a guest and you still have to smile through it and mm. do your work mm -hmm. you have to be well composed and I have someone like that on my team and I, I enjoy training her because she helps me when I have maybe more than one event. She'll be handling something mm. somewhere and I'm somewhere. And I, and I know that she's going to produce exactly what I want because my clients will not come back with any negative feedback. I see. Yeah. I want us to look at, uh, you know, what your daily looks like or if you went to an event, mm -hmm. what it would look like. Then when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. So let's take a look at that. Konutako is the creative lead of Carless Events GH, a dream she decided to make real. With over 10 years experience as a documentary producer and director, she has always had a soft spot for the events industry. Carless Events is best known for idea development, event styling and strategy, and bringing out the best in every project. She says it's not only a job, but a lifestyle.
360 video is brought to you by Kel360 Toothpaste. It would help you prevent gum disease, it will help you prevent cavity, and it will also whiten your teeth. It is suitable for everyone in the family who is above the age of six years old. Kel360 Toothpaste is a product of Samara Company Limited Producers of Sasso and it's also approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. That also means that you can rely on the quality. What generally goes into, you know, you know, planning an event and picking the right colors, the right space, you know, the right tool? First thing, you need to know um, who you're planning the event for. Is it an individual or a corporate event? That's the first thing. Now you need to know what they want, their vision, what mm -hmm. they envision, because every person will have an idea of what they want. They might not know exactly what they want, but they may have an idea. If you understand that idea, you build on that concept. Mm -hmm. Now, um, from venue selection, if I'm handling planning, um, we start from venue selection. And you need to pick the right venue mm. because you need to be able to execute every single thing that you want to accomplish in that space. I enjoy event um, venue transformation. You know, you take an ordinary space yeah. and then you turn it into something beautiful. And a lot of money goes into a that. A lot. A lot does. So would you say that you know, the business of events in the country is lucrative or it's just, you know, a niche area that is? It is lucrative mm -hmm. and there is, yeah, you see a niche as well because there are specific kinds of events. Like like what? Like, um, so there are corporate events that um, are profitable, that okay. side, and there are luxury weddings. Mm -hmm. I enjoy luxury weddings. Because it brings in the money. No, I mean, because, I mean, because money, of what you get to, to play with. Right. Yes, the right. elements you get to play with is exciting. So you don't have to do the same thing over and over again because I'm very detail-oriented. So maybe if you look at my table setting, you would see that it's not just flowers on the table. Mm -hmm. They are different elements. You know, as, as an event planner, designer, Sometimes you're tempted to agree with your clients. Are there things that are deal breakers for you that you'd say, no, I won't go this far, I won't take this contract because of ABC? Have you had that experience yet? Not yet. But if, have you given if, it a if, thought? Oh, yes, but I think the main thing would be if you don't know my worth. Mm -hmm. That is my deal breaker because mm -hmm. I feel I'm a whole package. So if you don't value me, mm -hmm. then there's no point because... I have really, really good feedbacks from, from my clients. I am very passionate about what I do, so I put my everything into it. So if I meet a client and the client wants, oh, I want this, I want that, and it's doable, I'll do it. If I feel that it might not maybe um, give me a good name in terms of my brand, okay. then maybe I'll compromise, but I haven't gotten there yet. But my biggest thing is my self-worth because mm -hmm. I know my worth. I have trained, I've done master classes, so there's no way you can come and then tell me I don't know my stuff and then, you know, devalue me. Makes sense, right? I yep. wanted to talk about your master class, but before that, let's let's finish on the money matters. Okay. And you know, times have changed the last three or four years. Yes. You know, people have events, mm -hmm. but they don't have as much to pump in. How is that going with your business? How is that going alongside hmm. your business? It's it's not been easy. <laughs> it's not been easy. It's it's been quite challenging. So people do have their money, but they're just saving it because mm. you can't blame them. The economy is kind of crazy now okay. um, from the time from COVID season till now people don't want to spend mm. as much they don't want to just splurge like it's not safe right. <laughs> yeah it's not safe and it's it's limited some clients and then it's limited some of us because mm. maybe you meet a client who actually has a, um, a very interesting concept you would like to you know bring to life but then they can't afford it. Hence, they want to cut down on, on the cost. They want to maybe trim here and there. And you still have to listen because right. they are your clients. It affects your final work. Mm. But then at the end of the day, you still have a standard. So you keep to that standard. When you keep to that standard, it helps. So what are some of those adjustments that you have had to make because of these difficult times? My design, my concept. Mm. And it's You've not had exciting. To dilute it a bit. <laughs> yes. For for your clients. Yes, and it's not exciting. Mm. So you know something where you can actually do maybe a ceiling work worth um, ten thousand. Mm -hmm. You would have to do a ceiling work worth five thousand. Okay. And the difference is huge. But then you see, you have to make sure that whatever you're producing 
is in line with your brand as well. And we don't just, you don't just cut down on cost because then it will affect the brand you're representing. You have to be sure that the client you're working with knows and understand your brand. Mm -hmm. If they do, compromising on the little here and there, it's actually easy. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you've spoken about luxury, you've spoken about brand, and, and there'll be people who have seen you and are interested to work with you. Right. Come everybody. Afford. Come to, yeah, come to Carlos. I believe that those who know my work and understand my work can come to Carlos. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to decode that. <laughs> you have to. You I'm have trying to decode that. But, but you do amazing stuff, Thank honestly. You. So how many Thank people you. do you employ now? Um, so since COVID time, um, I don't have full time workers okay. anymore because, you know, we had to restructure and learn from that. I actually had just two people I was working full time with. Before COVID? Yes, before okay. COVID. Now it's just one. But during events, I hire people. There are people I work with constantly. Okay. So um, they are usually on standby. They know we work per event. Mm. So as and when the job's coming we work because you know our our event industry we have our slow season and our busy season when are those our slow season usually starts around this time it's, it's from february march or march april mm. yeah mostly march april may then it starts picking up okay and then it goes down a bit a bit and then by august it picks up again okay december is the best so what do you do in your slow season I have other things I do, like, like my shoe business, mm -hmm. I sell shoes. Mm -hmm. I also produce documentaries, and I do corporate stuff for um, certain agencies. Right. So I freelance. You freelance. As a producer. I mean, so so someone would say that for young girls and boys who are watching, well, you're doing events and you're successful. Um, they look at those lovely pictures and they think, why would she need a side hustle? So um, tell them why it's you, you you choose to use your slow season for your other businesses right i don't think you, for a country like this one that's one mm -hmm. the economy is not that easy okay one source of income is not enough you may make good money yes but you want to continue to make money at the end of the day we all know that we are all working because of the money okay, yes so you can be comfortable and then do the best you can in, in the space or in the place you have. So for the young people out there, I'll say that mm. you, you have to aspire to want more. It helps you push yourself as an individual. Like it will drive you to want to know more. You get to study a lot of things. Mm. And as well, you will get to go to different fields. And I enjoy, I don't like doing one thing. Okay. Yes, that's why I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, but then, yes, the thing is, at the end of the day, you're trying to make money. You don't want to be struggling when business is not good. Okay. Yeah. So for some um, people out there who are inspired by your story and want to start their own, you know, events company, right? What would be your advice to them? You've been through the entire f process. I have. So the first thing is, um, they have a plan. They want. They want to get this mm -hmm. to happen. They shouldn't procrastinate. That's the first thing. Okay. They should come with a plan in terms of finance, how they are going to finance it. If they have a job and they want to save towards it, they can you know, come up with a plan, maybe a, a one year or two year plan where they can save towards that process. Now, when they are able to make that money and start, they need to surround themselves with the right people, the right people in the industry, mm -hmm. um, event professionals who understand their work because they already have a brand and they want to keep it and you are inexperienced so you surround yourself with the right people they will help you grow okay. you need to build a proper team and you need to learn to communicate with that team your first client your very first client you need to understand that client's vision so that you can be able to execute it because mm. that's where your next client will be. Right. It might be a guest, you don't know. I will tell you that my social media page is just my page. My jobs come from referrals. Right. Referrals and people who have been to my event and have actually seen me work. Mm. So when they come, they don't leave because they already know what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me. Mm -hmm. So you have to put out all your best, like putting everything I see. And for those who are perhaps already there, they have started their event, 
you've seen how difficult things could be. Yeah. Um, what would be if you were to give them like five tips on how to sustain their business and grow it at the same time? What would those be? Well, first of all, if you're already in the event space, I would say you need to learn. Mm. There is no excuse. Don't say, oh, I know this already, so I'm fine. No. I've been doing trainings okay. upon trainings every year. I do mm. new tra I train. And what are some of the, I know you did a few master classes. Yes. Tell us some of those master classes that you've had. I'll see my first master class was with White Chalk. Okay. It was informal, but then he actually took his time to train me through the process, explain everything. Um, right after that, mm -hmm. I had, um, th I think the next one was with Ahem, Ahem Conference. Um, and it was a group of people from Nigeria, someone from Lebanon, Vazbalit, and they all came with, you know, they are already big people in the industry. The interesting thing is, when you see people like that, you have this drive where you want to get to where they are. Right. And you, you are amazed by how they know all that they know, but they're still learning, mm -hmm. and they are always in a space where they can grow. Mm -hmm. For me, I would say that um, the experience during my master classes is amazing. One, you get to network with people, you get to meet people in the mm -hmm. same field. Mm -hmm. But the difference is probably they are from different countries, so you learn something from here, you pick something from there, and, and apply then to your own. Exactly. Work. So that's one. What are the uh, you know sustenance tips? Can you give people? You have to build a niche and mm -hmm. stick to it. Don't pick different kinds of. So you might think that, okay, I can do this, I can do this. So with events, there's luxury weddings, there's normal um, standard setups, there is um, parties. Maybe you are, you, you are professional, you're good with kids parties. Mm. You pick kids parties and stick to it. If you're that good, you'll be able to grow your business. Right. You'll be recognized in that field, in that aspect. Uh -huh. The minute you start doing anything and everything, people will not know like what exactly to associate you with. Right. What would you say is the most fulfilling part of your job? Oh, when I see my clients smile. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things. Um, I have clients who have actually called me. They've given me names. I have like MVP. I've been called uh, MVP. I've mm -hmm. been called Sky is my savior. They call me Sky mostly okay. at work, at my workspace. Um, um, I, when you see um, parents or siblings of your clients who well, personally, so yes, who call you and say, my sister said you were amazing, you did this and did that. And it, there's this sense of calmness and joy. That it brings That you. brings, yeah, mm. with all that. And it's, it's really fulfilling. I see. Uh, let's talk about, you know, some charity things you do and a wash that you have had. Um, right. Share those with us. Okay, so for charity, I'll say that my, so we have a, a foundation. Mm. That's my uncle's foundation. Um, I was doing that since I was young. It's called um, Angel Networks. So we go to villages, um, remote areas, mm. and then we do medical screening and training. Okay. We help people who are sick. We go with doctors and nurses, and mm. usually I help with the planning process, and I work on the field as well. We have our own personal um, giving that we do, which we haven't like tagged under any foundation, but for my house, mm. it's something we do. Okay. Um, I don't like to talk about the details of it, but oh. it's something we do. To give back. Yes, to, to give, give back. back. Thank okay. you. What are some of the recognitions and awards that you have received? Um, I was nominated by Event Vendors Association of Ghana, mm. um, Rising Star. Mm. Well, I was nominated twice. Okay. Yes, I wasn't able to get any award though, mm. but I was nominated twice. And that, and that's, that's good recognition, it isn't is. it? It, 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 it is. is. What are the future plans that you have for Colors events? Okay, so I'm looking at putting my business on a setting level mm. where um, I'll be able to handle anything and everything, but with um, details in terms of my niche. I want to build an organization where I have workers who can actually equally handle that. Okay. They'll be able to man it properly. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be there for 
the event to happen. To happen all yes, that. I'm looking at Colors being one of the biggest event companies in Ghana. And it's getting there, isn't it? Yes, it is. So how far in the future do you see this happening? Um, in the next five, five years. Yeah, five we'll, years. We'll be here to talk about it again. Oh, definitely. In the meantime, thank you for coming. We want to appreciate your journey so far. Oh. We're giving you some presents from our, our, our sponsors. Thank uh, you Samara so Company much. Limited, pro producers of um, the Kel Toothpaste brands. We have Kel 360, Kel Chaco, and Kel Kids. Um, we hope that you can use uh, you and your family or you and your staff. Thank who you. Who are also family because yes, you work are. with them. You work with them. And um, spread the word. I will. With, <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for coming. Thank you too for having you're, me. You're phenomenal. You're doing great things. Thank and, you. And we here at the PL Show are very proud of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> and in five years, we'll talk again. I can't wait. <laughs> You're watching the PL show, and we've been talking to a creative lead at Colors Event. Her name is Linda Farcourt Nutakom. <laughs>My friends, my name is Cal Kids Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. Yay! You did it! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl kids, happy smile. Welcome back. Up next is a documentary on the Kel toothpaste brands. Change, the only constant of life, creates a new reality to challenge the impossible, makes you stronger, precious, and connects you to the world of happiness. We at Samara Group of Companies are proud to be makers of change. For more than a decade, the group has been constantly striving for excellence, creating and building unique products that specifically address individual needs. This is inspiration behind our novel product, Kel Range of Products. Each consumer is unique and so are their needs. Samara recognizes this deeply and offers customization through various processes. Samara is a company that believes in quality. We always take time in bringing products out that will help the consumer achieve certain needs. We looked at Kel toothpaste because we realized that we do not have toothpaste that fight the main thing, that is the problems of the gums, the problems of children. We decided to look at that aspect with a focus on children and then the charcoal brand. I like Kelkis because it is strawberry flavor and it is sweet and it is strong and it makes my teeth white. We were able to establish the fact that most Ghanaians do not visit the dentist for regular checkups. They do so only when problems have already occurred and in most cases worsening. So we sat down with our experts to come out with a toothpaste that will prevent plaques, dental cavity, bad breath, and also gives the consumer or customers brighter teeth. In Ghana, we don't really pay attention to toothpaste for children. We always look at the normal toothpaste the whole family uses. And so we tend to leave the children out. So brushing their teeth becomes a problem. I'm a mother of two. And for a long time, we haven't had any product that has been made specifically for the kids when it comes to brushing of teeth or toothpaste brand. So most of the time you find that when it's time to brush their teeth, they would either throw tantrums or they'll cry or they don't want to brush their teeth. But the good news is that um, ever since Kill Kids Toothpaste was introduced, 
they they even prefer to brush their teeth, teeth themselves they don't allow me to brush it for them they have fun brushing their teeth and with the jingle that comes along with this to find them happy singing along and doing their own thing and i think it's something that has come to help mothers when it comes to brushing of teeth because most kids don't really like to brush their teeth so um, I would applaud them for the good products. Looking at Ghana, a country, it's a big market. Everybody in this world uses toothpaste. Gone are the days we were using our chewing sticks. So we look at it as a big market and if we are able to bring the quality products that Ghanaians always love, we'll be able to satisfy them. Samara looked at all those things and then we leverage on the mass market how it's going to impact the lives of the people. And then that is why Hell Charcoal Toothpaste and the other variants came into being. Today, Samara is bent on fulfilling the country's growing demand for good oral health, an integral requirement for good life. To achieve this, a group of experts assembled edge cutting technology to manufacture toothpaste products of the highest quality to support the delivery of good oral hygiene for the market. Samara so Company Limited has a representative in China. Uh, she's a Chinese and she's very dedicated. She's been with the company for the past 15 years. So as a foreign operations manager, my work here is uh, I take whatever decision management takes up to her in China and then she finalizes it so that production goes on and whatever we expect from her is duly done as we require. You know, Samara, we don't compromise on quality and she knows a whole lot about that through the production to the shipment to the goods arriving at the thermal port. My duty is to help Samara find a high quality spreads in China and follow up on all the issues. My role also increased checking whether the suppliers meet the high quality standards of Samara and further discussing the cooperative relationship between Samara and suppliers. Samara is a company with a 30 years history of development. We have stood taught and had lasting success. This means that our high quality product and brand reputation is worthy of customer trust. It's the high quality product for the development of Samara. Kel range of toothpaste products are manufactured and created with a lot of health benefit for the consumer. What we try to do is to come out with a product that will prevent uh, problems like plaques, tooth decay, bad breath, and the rest from happening. So in our quest to prevent this from happening, gave birth to Kel range of toothpaste. We are leaders in making environmentally friendly products certified by industry standards and constantly innovate quality systems to ensure longevity of end products which instills and create trust among customers. Our products are very effective and competitive in the market, which is a good choice for consumers. In addition, our products are environmentally friendly from raw material for manufacturing. Kel dear, the meet me a car for when it's there. Kel, a buy and tame them. But say the amount for say who kel no, the crime is doing one in TSC. A very good. Would Pesia, which you must say when you want to say, Tech, a year come up, and even crying for Faber Ha, me introduce Suma or more. This will be a bar or be a tobacco, but next time about Mammy four, Mammy five. This one was a kel dear. A very good. A try care and a care fine for who you saw at sea when him. So also ran up and out the paste here. A ye a man mind a free woman. So be clear when any one can send me a man a care to paste in house where you saw at sin and no pie and my and can you free and it's a care there a papa. The entire amount for pack kelm. Who you see brush here? When you get clear, no, 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 sense. It's a care to face a papa. Kel range of product is now packaged ready for distribution the biggest smile the confidence the warm the charm and true appreciation of life is a main focus of Kel range of products the sustainability of every product i believe since i've been in the company is the quality at samara our values are our guidelines leading this journey to a larger cause Our 
customers are our core strength. The a dedicated team who has power to be your trusted friend work relentlessly to give you the best service experience and product. For our consumers, our customers, we want to appreciate them for their loyalty to all our brands. They started with Sasso and they, they have continued with Roma down to Feco. It is Kale. And since its introduction, they have never failed us. We thank them for their loyalty and we promise them quality products all the time. It is our endeavor to continuously spread happiness to you now and forever with Kel range of products. Kel kids, happy smile. Kel, happy smile.